Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching 90 Day Fiancé. As I always say, and is included below, you should always be careful when you're watching these kinds of shows because they can be triggering, and I can talk about triggering material. So please proceed with caution. Let's watch the show. We have only one day left. And we should make a decision, honestly. And what do you think? Let's either we get married or we don't get married. I mean, those are our two options. Uh, it's pretty obvious what's happening right here. And she sits down and she's like, okay, we got to make a choice here. There's what's happened. I either have, we talked to the lawyer. They said that either we either have to get married by tomorrow night or I have to leave by tomorrow night. So, you know, what do you want to do? So clearly she's asking the question of, do you want to get married tomorrow? Because I'm up for it. That sounds like what she's saying. What he what he says is, yeah, I don't know. I guess we have two options. You know, I don't know. It's I have no idea. When I see that kind of behavior, which seems irrational, and I'm sure it's frustrating a lot of people when they watch this show, he his behavior. When I see that behavior and I think, what is going on there? It must be something significant in his past that leads him to be so pent up and so walled up and so afraid to even hint that he has an emotion or that he's even kind of vulnerable or even that he has a want. Now, I think for him, what he wants to do is to continue to date, but to not get married tomorrow. He, I think he is you know, pretty sure about that. I mean, he did one lever at the altar two hours before and two, when he was talking to the lawyer, he's like, I'm not ready to get married. Is there any way we could extend the time so I could make sure? So let's see what they say. What is your opinion? I'm still processing it right now. Still processing it. Well, you know, speed up the processor because the time is a ticking and her life is in the balance. So at the very least, you would think he would say something, you know? If I was there, I'd be like, okay, you're processing. Tell us what you're processing. She deserves to know. And you deserve to have it heard. You deserve to have it validated. So let it out. Let out your processing. So something like, well, I'm... I'm, I'm only 70% sure that I want to spend the rest of my life with her, but that's not enough for me to get married and I still love her and I don't want to let go of this relationship and I wish we had another 90 days. And, but at the same time, if that's a deal breaker for her and she you know, decides to break up with me or we decide to break up, uh, you know, I'll move on with my life, but I, that's not what I want. But maybe it's for the best because we keep going back and forth and I don't really know if we're ever going to work out. And maybe it's best that I, we just end it and just call it quits so that at least she can go on with her life. And, you know, something along those lines, just something other than, I don't know, just kind of processing. I feel like a pushy all the time. But no matter what I say, it doesn't really matter for you. It does matter what you say. I like to hear your opinion. My opinion is like tomorrow my visa expires. Tomorrow's the last day Yes. Yeah. Without pay, paper that we are husband and wife, I'm mm -hmm. crossing the law. So I think what he's waiting for is for her to break down and be vulnerable because I think for him, he needs to have her make the first move. For her to say, I love you, I want to get married, please let's get married tomorrow. And I think if she were to say that, I'm guessing he would at least entertain the idea. But anything short of that, I think he's too afraid to extend himself. And so he's, he's waiting and waiting and waiting. And like, and I, I had this analogy at the beginning of the season, maybe even last season when I was watching them. And I would use this analogy with, with couples like this is that they, they walk up to the edge of the pool and they say, yay, we're going to go in the pool. We're going to have fun. This is great. We're, we're going swimming. This is so great. And the other person is like, okay, you first. And then the other person is like, no, you first. The other person is like, well, I don't want to jump in by myself. You know, if I jump in and then you don't jump in, I don't want to, that's going to feel bad. I don't want, the other person, well, me too. I don't want to jump in and be alone. I, I need us to do this at the same time. Okay, ready? One, two, three. And they don't jump. They, hey, I thought you were going to, and they're both waiting because they're so afraid. And if they were 
able to trust each other and say, okay, I'm going to jump and I tr- I'm, gonna, I'm just going to trust that you're going to jump. They jump, they jump together and they have a great time in marriage. The pool is the metaphor for the wonderful marriage of being vulnerable and telling other, other people how you feel and getting other people to have compassion for you and validate you. But the whole two seasons, ever since they started having conflict, they're waiting at the edge of the pool going, oh, no, 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 no. So I'm guessing we're just going to see more of that. I don't know. Let's watch. What play is that? I don't know. So what are your thoughts about spending the rest of your life with me? What are your thoughts about me? What are your thoughts about getting married tomorrow? What are your thoughts about dating me? What are your thoughts in general? And he says, I don't know. You don't know? (laughs) You have zero thoughts. And again, I get it. When we see this, we have to assume there is significant trauma that is leading him to be so distrustful and so afraid of being vulnerable, so afraid to talk about his feelings and his wants that leads him to such odd behavior. You would imagine there would be some thoughts in there. And he's like, I don't know. The way that you would walk up to someone and say, you know, do you like maroon or do you like purple? Which one is which one is your favorite? You know, a lot of people, including me, would be like, I don't know. What, what? You know, she's not asking you to make some arbitrary decision here that you're not involved in. Like, this is a major. You, of course, you have a lot of thoughts and feelings. What are they now? Due to her issues, I think she has a tendency to put up walls too. Not like him, but she can that I think it leads her to have a hard time asking more pointed questions. With Brandon and Julia, we actually saw Julia, uh, when she would get a sort of wall from Brandon, she would drill down. And so like, no, 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 tell me more. With Natalie, she often just kind of gives up. And so let's see if she can ask. So if I were there, I'd go, Julia, you're doing, or uh, Natalie, you're doing great. Ask again in a different way. You know, what thoughts are you asking about? What kind of thoughts are you asking about? So she might say, what are your thoughts about us getting married tomorrow? Do you want to get married tomorrow? You know, more pointed questions. And I would actually be working a lot with him on what's going on with you. And he would say, I don't know. And I'd say, like, you don't know anything? Like, what emotion are you feeling right now? I don't know. Okay, well, what do you want in life? I don't know. You know, like I've worked with clients like this and who have been through tremendous traumas to result in that kind of odd behavior. It takes a long time. It can be frustrating, though, particularly if you're a spouse. Obviously, I should leave if you don't want to, like, if you're not married, so. I cannot live in the constant stress, worrying. Oh, my God, because I commit a lot. I came here and... uh, I feel like abandoned by you. Okay, so now she's being forward, which is great. She's saying, well, obviously, if we're not gonna get married, I should leave. So let's see what he says here. So what am I staying for? I mean, oh, I wish the circumstances were different and everything going on right now. I'm just at the end of the rope. Man, it is frustrating, right? the same statements over and over again. Well, with all the stuff going on right now, end of the, what does that mean, dude? What does that mean? Do you want to, it's an easy answer. Do you want to get married tomorrow or not? Now, if I were her, I would ask that very, very pointed question. Do you want to get married tomorrow or not? Yes or no? No random, no, I don't know. No, you know, unless I hear yes, I'm going to assume it's a no. Now I'm beginning to wonder if, he actually doesn't want to be with her because he is acting in a way that is essentially giving her an idea that he's not into it, but he doesn't want to say it. And there are a lot of people like this, that they're so ashamed of their thoughts and their feelings, and they're so worried about shame and guilt that as a tactic of breaking up with someone, they will do this sort of thing where they'll just say, I don't know, I don't know. And what they're hoping is that the other person will just leave them and it'll save them the trouble and the vulnerability and the, the potential guilt of having to actually say it, I want to break up with you. But earlier he was, I don't know, it's extremely confusing. Are we going to see another season with this couple? Is that what's happening? Please talk to me, please. I'm right here listening to you. I don't want to break the law. 
Natalie wants to get married within the 90 days and be legit, which is a valid point. What can Natalie do at this point to convince you that you guys should get married? I, I don't have an answer for that. I really don't. What did you expect, producer? <laughs> now, I'm just going to take a guess and say that the producers are a hundred times more frustrated than we are because they're trying to produce a story naturally. And so they're probably asking them a lot of questions and getting a lot of answers like this. And so they've, they're probably only showing us the few moments where it actually makes sense to show it. I'm just taking a guess there. Now, again, I get it. People like this have traumas. I'm just going to assume that he has a lot of good emotional reasons. I don't know. But boy, is it frustrating. And I guess, you know, as a clinician, I'm, I'm always thinking about countertransference. And if and I know many of you are clinicians as well. And so obviously, I'm ha if they were clients of mine, which they're not, I'm having some kind of emotional reaction. So let me investigate that a little bit. I am a straight talker. I value open communication. I have been annoyed with people in my personal life, throughout my life, who have been like him in a certain way. And it can be very hurtful to me to be wanting to talk to someone and to have them have this kind of response. Now, if I truly believed that these people didn't care about me, I'd be like, well, you know, this person doesn't care about me. But you get the clear sense that Mike does care about Natalie in some way. So you get this, there's behaviors or there's other indications that, I mean, the fact that he asked her to marry her uh, a couple times should indicate something. But then you get this total lack of, of detail and it's hurtful. You think, why are you not talking to me? You know, it's sort of like, you're calling your cell phone company and you're like asking them some technical question and they're giving you the runaround. Well, you expect that because, you know, that's just par for the course with those kinds of businesses. You don't expect to get that kind of crazy making conversation with your spouse or your fiance or your friend or your cousin or something. You know, you expect to have them care about you and love you and actually like extend themselves a little bit and open up a little bit. And when there's none of it, it's, it's it, and because they don't seem bothered by it. There's, they, they give you this impression like, I don't even know why you're asking me this question. You're just like, yeah, why am I asking this question when it's perfectly reasonable to ask those kinds of questions and want that kind of contact with someone. But anyway, yeah. So I, I'm reacting to him, I guess, because of all the times I've had someone like this in my life. It's not very frequent. And it just hurts and it's frustrating and you just feel like where are you like i mean i can't like how do you answer something like that i don't know again the producer asked what does natalie need to do in order for you to want to get married to her tomorrow and he says i don't know how am i supposed to there's no there's no answer to that question there's no answer to that question <laughs> you don't have requ you don't have a, a an idea of how you would like natalie to be different such that you would say, yes, I definitely, I mean, I'm guessing he has the answer to that question. I'm guessing he would say, well, I want her to stop getting on my case about beer. I want her to stop getting on my case about meat. I want her to stop calling me low class. I want her to never throw the ring back in my face. I want her to just have a good time. I want her to be happy in my house. I want her to, I don't know, just stop yelling at me. Some, or, we would imagine that he would say something like that. But he just says, I don't know, like, how could I possibly answer that question? Like, you're asking him to explain, you know, general relativity or something. We got our issues, we got lots of things, everything's rushed. It's not like it's a magical fairy tale here. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not like there's really anything that's just gonna magically change my mind and, and it's gonna be poof. <laughs> no, there's not, like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Oh, I think what he's saying is there's nothing that Natalie could do right now to convince me that I want to get married tomorrow. Uh, so I think that's the way he's interpreting it, which makes sense because even if she did say, look, I'm going to make this change, I'm going to make that change, how would he really know? Now, I don't think it's her fault that they've had problems. They both are contributing to it. But anyway, 
All right, well, that does it for that episode. If you haven't known already, I do a cameo, which means that you can have me tell someone a happy birthday or tell you a happy anniversary or give someone a pep talk or something. So if you're interested, go to Cameo, and it's a way for me to actually give back to you a little bit or to congratulate you. It actually makes me feel good to sing you happy birthday. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.